Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to uh, model a simple piece of furniture and make a couple of shop drawings for it. So I'm going to start with this example of a wood frame stool and just model kind of the basic members of it. I'll show you a couple other techniques as well. Um, but uh, essentially, you want to start from a 2D representation of the um, elements that you're attempting to model. So for example, if I wanted to model uh, um, something that was curvilinear, that had a kind of a thickness to it, and you know, you'll probably want to be a little bit precise about how you figure out the dimensions of that. So for example, if I was going to model a kind of S-curve table leg or something like that, I might go into front view, and um, I'm also just notice that I'm in inches here. And I would first, I would just draw out the dimensions of whatever it is I'm um, trying to uh, trying to figure out. So I would maybe start with a, uh, just a polyline that could map out the overall dimensions. I choose 0, 0 for the first point. And then I would maybe choose a distance. Or, you know, Okay, so we could model out kind of the frame of the overall dimensions, and then we could start to think about where things would be subdivided. Uh, so if I split my containing volume by that middle line, then I can get a midpoint of this edge here. Um, so I could say model a curve, kind of using that as my framework, right? something like that. And then, of course, if you were to actually, um, you, you want to be modeling with a realistic sense of the thickness of things, right? So let's say if this is our curve here that would represent the shape of something we wanted to make, we would also want to think about what's the thickness of that thing from a certain dimension. So let's say it's three quarters of an inch. Um, we might even take this and scale it. Uh, so actually, first, let me, what I would actually do is I would make my bounding box offset. So I'll use the command offset, offset it by 3 quarters of an inch inward. And so then I could scale 1D this shape relative to that outline. Actually, you know what? I did it slightly wrong. Um, I would, if my, if my, curve was going to be 3 quarters of an inch in thickness, I would actually offset this outline by 3 eighths of an inch, right? Half the thickness of that. All right, so type in offset. Offset. 3 divided by 8. All right, let's try that again. So scale 1D. All right. And go to the... Okay. And so now if we were to, you know, look at the thickness of this, we would offset it. Again, we're offsetting by 3 eighths. This time we would offset, I would choose this option both sides. So I'm looking at the curve I drew as a center line, right? And then I could even choose under the option cap to make it flat if I wanted to join the ends of my offset, my new offset lines. Um, or you could choose none if you wanted to modify that after the fact. Um, in fact, you would actually maybe want to, so you could extend this curve a bit. Oops. So that we can trim it to whatever, you know, size we want later. All right, so then we'll, oops. Offset both sides, okay. And remember that's the, so I didn't extend it quite far enough, but so you would see that the offset of my center line would be, you know, touching uh, the outside dimensions that I'm trying to reach. And actually, I should have extended this a bit further. Oops. Can't spell that. Okay. And if you leave it on that option natural, it tends to just kind of continue whatever curvature you got going on. 
right, great. And then I would just, you know, make another line there and trim everything. All right. And so that's how you would begin with like creating this shape. So if I were to go into 3D, you'd see that it's been drawn in front view. And so this could easily be extruded, right? If I use the extrude curve command and make sure I have the option solid turned on, you know, you could extrude that to whatever dimension it is. I put my viewport in shaded. Oh, for some reason it didn't. Oh, I think I turned off the option. The option solid will just cap the ends, right? So 1.5, there we go. So that would be one element, right? That's been modeled the way you want it. Um, now, I'm going to model again, like I mentioned, that stool. So I just wanted to point out that the way to do anything complex is to draw it in 2D and then uh, extrude it. If uh, like anything kind of curvilinear, that's usually the best way to go. Um, so I'm going to model this stool frame. It's pretty simple. It's again, uh, these outside dimensions are a foot by a foot, uh, overall dimension, 18 inches, overall height. And, uh, the members themselves are inch and a half. Oh, actually, sorry, inch and a quarter. In, uh, so I would start in top view and I would, again, I would draw out the overall dimensions of, uh, what I want. So I'm going to draw a rectangle 12 by 12. Okay, and then switch back into 3D here. I would make another rectangle. In fact, you could just go straight to making a box at this point. So that would be 1.5 by 1.5 by 18. Okay. Now, we don't quite know what the dimension across is, right? So we could figure that out the hard way. Um, so I could move this to, oops, I'll grab the midpoint there, move it to a corner, and I'll rotate it. So it's diagonal across my go. Copy it to the other side there. Now I don't know, I guess you'd have to decide whether you want the inside. So I guess I had the inside corners. So if I wanted it to be the inside corners, I would move it perpendicular, there we go. And then one thing that actually is really helpful is if you grab this uh, rectangle and you type area centroid, it'll create a point at the center. So I could actually really quickly copy this thing by using the command rotate and turn the option copy on. And then I'm holding shift to snap to ortho and just copy it 90 degrees four times. So that's pretty easy. So now I have the verticals of my uh, stool. And then if I were to make the horizontals, I would want to rotate these pieces again. And in fact, this time I'll use the command rotate 3D. Um, which would allow me to, oh, but I could also, so I could rotate those from down and I would copy it, of course, to keep the vertical, or I could make a, I could just make a new rectangle. <coughs> Excuse me. And then when I use this command box, I would uh, choose the option three point. And I know I want it to be whatever length apart these are, and I want it to be 1.5 in height because that's the size of my members. And again, I would just use, I'll switch into ghosted here, use my center point. Okay. So then I would copy that up above to make a vertical. I would type in copy, choose the option vertical, and bring that up above. Let me just change my transparency so we can see a little better. too far. Okay, so now we have the basic members and these are what you would cut to begin to fabricate the stool, but we also want to uh, model the joints, right? The pieces that are cut away so that they can actually um, connect to each other rather than just being intersecting like they are now. So the way to do that, there's a couple ways and uh, kind of techniques that you might use to help you figure that out. One of them would be to, um, you could start by like, for example, if I wanted to figure this joint right here out, I could start by just finding the intersection between 
uh, these two members, and I can simply do that by using the command intersect. So I would select both of them at the same time, type in intersect. And so that will give me an outline everywhere where the, those two pieces are, are intersecting each other. And I could then make a box. Again, I would choose the option three point. And I would go halfway down. And then I'll actually just delete those curves. I don't need them anymore. And then you would take this piece, this top piece, for example, and you would use the command Boolean difference. And so I have a couple options with this. I can choose to, again, I have the, I'm going to subtract from the object that I had selected when I started the command. And then I would choose the option delete input yes. Okay. And so now you can see if I isolate this component, it's got this like, you know, cut out, carved away from it. I'll show everything again. Now, I only really need to do that once per joint, because then what I can do is um, I can actually use this piece to create the cutout for that piece, right? So then I would choose that piece, and I would say Boolean difference. This time, delete input would be set to no, right? And if I click on this guy, so it won't delete the object I used to carve it away, but this guy is now also cut away. So you can see there how those would go together. And I could do the same exact thing for uh, these pieces. So um, you probably don't need to actually do an intersect for this. Let's go point. There we go. And then I would go Boolean difference. Oh, I didn't delete it. There we go. Oops. All right. And so I actually, you know, if you think carefully about, you know, which direction these joints are going, you can, you can make it simpler on yourself. And what I mean by that is you can make it so that you know, like this piece, for, exa for example, would be the same set of joints and directions and sides to cut as this piece. And so to do that, I would just simply, right, first I'll make, subtract this. Like that. Oh, I did it wrong. So to do that, instead of um, you know making trying to figure out what set, it, I would just co I'm just going to copy it. <laughs> so I'll um, take this piece. This time I'll just use the gumball, but you can use your center point as well. If you tap Alt on the keyboard, that should make a copy. And I'll rotate it 90 degrees. That's interesting that it didn't give me on center. That is very interesting. Ah. Oh wait. No. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Just delete it. We'll try it again using the rotate command and snapping to our center point there. There we go. And then, you know, to flip it, basically, you know, it's like it's the same shape, but it would be flipped along its like longitudinal axis. Um, so we could rotate along the longitudinal axis. In order to do that, I would just snap to the midpoint of one of these ends. So that's like, that should kind of be the center line of my part, right? Oh, 180. There we go. So those would now lock together just fine. And then I can, you know, now I know that this is going to work if I subtract from those guys the same in order of, oh, sorry, this one. Okay. So now we have the whole top of the stool model. Then in fact, I would just copy that again. I'll just copy vertical and bring it down to the zero, zero point. And so once again, I can just take these guys at Boolean difference and select those guys. And voila. So again, these are all the same, right? The lap joints are facing the same direction. The reason you want that is because um, it just makes it less confusing and, and uh, 
uh, you're less likely to kind of screw up by cutting something the wrong way or cutting the wrong direction, you know. Essentially, we only have two types of part, right, in this whole stool, even though there are, in total, uh, six, six, or 12 parts. So, you know, I have four of those, and I have, or sorry, there's eight parts, eight of those, right? Um, sorry, four of those and four of those, but they're all the same as each other, right? So I wouldn't have to kind of um, keep track of so many different uh, types of parts and stuff like that. Um, so now if I wanted to model the seat, for example, and I have a sort of design of a seat that has these, uh, you know, it's essentially a plane, but it's got these little curved um, ends on it. So again, I would go into front view and I would, uh, you know, it's a it's a twelve by twelve thing. So I would first draw the outline twelve by whatever it doesn't matter. And we could also then choose, you know, like okay, so this is the kind of center line. Let's divide the center line into four segments. That makes sense. Okay, so we could say this segment of the seat is going to be flat, and then this one will taper up or curve up. You know, however much we want. And uh, let's see, so I could split this line with these two points. Oops. So now I have a separate segment there, a different one there. And let's say we want it to curve up so it's hitting, I don't know, try like half an inch. Is that weird? Okay. I'll copy that to the other side just by mirroring it. So you kind of want to map out like what dimensions you're using first. And then in order to draw, again, I'm drawing like the profile of my seat shape. I would use the command arc. And arc will give you a, a curve that has a constant radius, right? Which, um, if that's something you want, then uh, you want to use that command. And I would use actually the option tangent. And so you'll see when you use a tangent, it's going to like start from the direction of any curve you snap to. I don't know if you can see that white line that's showing me the tangent direction of wherever I'm snapping. So I'd snap to the endpoint there. You can see it's going to make a thing that's tangent. And then, then I could choose the option point rather than, so I could snap obviously to a tangent of another curve or something. Um, if I wanted it to sort of make a smooth transition from one edge to another. In this case, we can't do that, so it's not giving us the option, but. If we chose, if we clicked point here, then it would know we were not trying to get to a tangent of another curve. We're just trying to intersect the arc with, an, with a point. So then I would click that point where I've mapped out, uh, you know, I want the height of my seat to go to. And then it's going to ask me uh, if I have a third tangent curve. I don't, so I'm just going to hit enter. And then essentially I can choose for the arc to be there or there, right? I can choose for it to be starting from one side and going around, or starting from the inside and going. So I'll just click here, so it doesn't give me the weird option. Right. And then there's the little curve, so I'll copy or I'll mirror that across the way there. And again, I would just join those back into one curve and use the offset command. This time, let's say my overall thickness is half an inch, so I'd use a quarter of an inch. I'm still using the option both sides. And I'm still using the option cap. And now I have one closed outline that's half an inch thick. Actually, probably half an inch is a punch. So let's say we wanted it to be 3 eighths, we would offset by 3 sixteenths, right? Okay. And then if I extrude that guy to 12 inches, it should be more or less uh, the dimensions of the seat that we want. Now, in order to kind of position it relative to my existing model, I'll put it in ghosted so you can see what I'm doing here. I would draw a line from the bottom edge, midpoint of the bottom edge to the mid opposite. Right, so I drew a line kind of centered along the bottom of my stool. And then I would draw a point object at the midpoint of that line. Right, so now I know where the very center of my seat is. And I can use that to. Uh, move my stool so it's like 
or sorry, to move my seat so it's like centered on my my frame. And I'm going to go back to top view so that I can move it with the vertical option. I'll type in move vertical. I'll snap to the bottom of my seat and then snap to the top of my frame. And uh, yeah, so now you have a sense of like what the real dimensions of this thing are. And frankly, it looks a little bit goofy, right? So maybe I'm thinking now, oh, maybe I want my seat to be a little larger, which I think actually in reality it was. Yeah, it was extended past. So anyway, so you could, you know, you could go back over here and you could, uh, um, so let's say we wanted our seat to be 15 inches. I would scale this to be 7.5, so the overall, oops. I didn't work. Oh, I took the wrong number. And we could even, you know, explode this line and we could keep the curves. And extend those to join it, join it, offset it, extrude it, 15, you know. Anyway, so you, you kind of want to um, use this also as an exercise to figure out the proportions and dimensions of what it is that you want. All right, so in the next video, I'm going to show you how to take this model and uh, make some shop drawings with it. All right.